Good morning, everyone. Buenos dias. Good morning, everyone, on this beautiful Sunday morning. I don't know about you, but I came to worship the Lord. I'm glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. At this time, let us receive an open selection from our choir.
my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host shall encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. And verse 5, for in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. The word of God for the people of God.
Church of God, which is in Christ at his return. We believe in the holy means of being cleansed from sin, is through repentance, faith in the precious blood of Jesus Christ, and being baptized in the Lord. We believe that the regeneration by the Holy Ghost is absolutely essential for personal salvation. We believe that the death of work of Christ on the cross provides healing for the human body and answer to believing in prayer. We believe that the baptism in the Holy Ghost according to Acts 2 and 4 is given to believers who ask for it altogether. We believe in the sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit by whose indwelling the Christian is able to live a holy and separated life in this present world. Amen. And our praise and worship team is coming. Please say amen as they come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many will give the Lord praise and spite of Oh, yes. The song simply say, I give you praise. Glorify your name. Hallelujah. Lord, I give you praise. Can we stand all over the sanctuary? It's praise and worship time. Can you help me? Can you help me by standing up? Hallelujah. Come on, clap those hands and lift them. Come on, clap those hands and give God praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Can you bring them up a little bit? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. This song simply goes like this. I give you praise. Glorify your name.
give you praise. No music. Sing it, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I give, Lord, I give you praise. When my heart is broken, Woo. hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I give, Lord, I give you praise.
get plugged back in and get full of him. Like there is no joke. We're all facing something. That bill is due. This is happening over here. That's happening over there. But did he get you through it? It's not the first time. So I got to give him all the praise. I got to give him all the glory. I got to give him all the honor. Because who did it? Who did it? Work it out. Look to your neighbor and tell him he's gonna work it out. My God's gonna work it out. Hallelujah. 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 Testify. Hallelujah. 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 It's a spiritual thing. Hallelujah. That's God inside of you, touching you, He's calling you. He's reaching into you. Let Him in. Open the door. Open the door. Open the door. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. up 
wants to be picked up. That's all we have to do. And he will pick you up. Move you. He said it's going to be all right. Hallelujah. At this time, let us receive our first lady. I can't see right now, but um, <laughs> to welcome our visitor. praising the Lord, it made me think about, and I, I told you it was the older song, so it was the older version, but how everything that I've been through, or everything we've been through, we just want to thank God, and you know, and so it was just in my spirit ringing, just want to thank God, that's all I can do is just thank him and praise his name, but I'm here to welcome our visitors, we don't have any here present in front of us, but live stream or Facebook, we have someone who may be visiting. And I want to welcome you to the St. Stephen's Church of God in Christ, located here in Virginia Beach in the SeaTac section. And our pastor is the Elder Bruce Elliott Hughes Sr. And I just want to thank you. Well, I want to welcome everyone for who is here, the St. Stephen's, for coming and worshiping and praising God with us. Continue praising God and remember to just thank God for all he's done for you. Amen. At this time we'll have a selection following with the ministry of giving.
stand before you for our, to receive our offering and our tithes. I like to say sometimes you have a Scooby-Doo moment like Ruh -Ruh. Things don't go as planned, but uh, all is well. So have those that are uh, desire a tie envelope, just raise your hand if you have, and the ushers will serve you. I have uh, ties for Mother Durham, ties and offering from our pastor, Bruce Elliott Hughes, ties from our first, ties and offering from First Lady Hughes, ties and offering from Sister Johnson, ties from Deacon Gregory, ties and offering from Elder Rose, and ties and offering from Deacon Hartfield. That's all to stand. You can stand. The ushers will guide you. Oh, precious Father, Lord, bless this offering, Lord. Bless those that have a desire to give, Lord, and don't have to give, Lord. But continue to bless us, Lord. Lord, continue to have grace and mercy upon us, Lord. In Jesus' powerful name we pray. Amen and amen. <laughs> sing, but I'm not going to sing, but uh, <laughs> you know, when we uh, come into the sanctuary, I know we also have so many things in our mind, and things are going on, and you know, we don't know what to do, but at that time, we should leave all our burdens on the altar, just because when we leave here, we got to leave in a better way than we came in, you know, I feel sometimes that uh, I don't do all I have to do. And then he gives me a second chance and a third chance. So, but God is a good God. He's been too kind to me. And uh, I don't know what else I could talk to him, talk about him for hours. But this time, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our pastor. You know, there's bios to be read and there's things that we've accomplished and there's legacies to leave behind. But when you look at man's character and the way that he acts, then that defines the man. The man of few words, but he's always here in the church. He will say, hey, I was up in the attic. I was doing this. I'm going to paint. I'm gonna. He's the pastor. I love him dearly. He's a close friend to me, but he's my leader. And I have to 
you know, hear what he's saying because he's in a different, and I'm when I say levels, I don't mean like he's high, but he's in a different distance in his walk. And some of the things that I, I want to do, he corrects. I remember one time I was working on the sign back there. I don't remember if you remember that, Pastor, but I was back there working on the sign and the street sign. It was about 10 years ago. And there was a young lady, it was, I don't know, maybe 11 o'clock at night, said she needed a ride. And me being like, yo, yeah, I'll give you a ride, no worries, you know, like, not knowing what could be. He came up to me and he said no. And then he took care of it. Now, there must have been some type of danger, but I didn't dispute. He saw something that I didn't see. And sometimes we have to, you know, take a step back and listen to leadership. And he wasn't an executive pastor then, he was just, he was Elder Hughes. But as a deacon, I was listening. He's the husband to one wife, Sister Vicki Hughes. Fathers of two sons, both in the ministry. He's, he's still working and I don't think he'll always be working. <laughs> he's sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. He's a man that says that what he's going to do, and he, he just does it. Um, I love him dearly. He's a good man. So after this uh, choir sings one of their sermonic selections, the next voice that you're going to hear from won't be from this Puerto Rican. It'll be from my pastor. You could share him, your pastor. Bruce Elliott Hughes, Sr. Glory to God. I just want to testify just a real quick. My voice and, and everything was acting up and I had got laryngitis. I went from the flu to a cold and but God kept telling me to press. Keep on pressing on. I went to the doctor, I got some medicine, and it's helping a little bit, but God is testing. He wants to see how faithful I really am going to be. And I stand here today to let you know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. And I love the Lord on today. Do you love the Lord on today? Hallelujah. So we're gonna come to you on today and just sing for the good of them. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Pray for us. Ice 
I had to walk alone, walk alone, walk alone. But I'm here to tell you that I know, that I know, that I know. Things will work out, yes, they will. For the good of them. Hallelujah. today for those who love the Lord come on let's get a Lord of hand praise come on let's get a Lord of hand praise somebody ought to shout hallelujah somebody ought to shout glory is he worthy on today is your Lord and Savior on today Yes, that's the message for today. Things will work out. For the good of them. Who love the Lord. He said no matter what the problem is, We can't solve them. Yeah. She said things will work out for the good of them. Loves the Lord.
Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, once again, we thank you for your love and for your kindness. Lord God, we thank you for your tender mercy on today. This morning, this afternoon, we realize in you, we live, we move. And Father, we have our beings. Pause for a moment, God, to tell you thank you. As we take an inventory of our lives, oh God, see where you brought us from. We're fit to live, we're worthy to die. But because of your grace, your mercies, we're here today. God, we just want to tell you thank you. If it had not been for you, God. God, where we be on today? The enemy want to swallow us up. But all I have come from you. Where else can we go? We pause to tell you thank you. You are Lord, you are King. God, you are Savior, you are Redeemer. We pause to tell you thank you. We pray that you be the invited guest on today. As we yield ourselves to you, God. Asking you to have your way in this temple, God. Let your glory fill the temple. Renew our strength, God. Give us peace. That surpasses all understanding. Give us strength. Give us a mind to endure hardness. As a good soldier of you. Look upon the sick and shut in throughout this land, all over the world, God. Touch, heal, deliver, set us free, God. In the name of Jesus, look on those who are oppressed, God. Look on those who are depressed. Look on those who are bereaved for the loss of their loved ones. Heal on today. We need you, God. We need you. We can't live without you. We can't make it without you. Help! You withdraw yourself from us, God. Where we going today? Pray that you let the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, and let them be acceptable, pleasing in your eyesight. And these are the blessed words in Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. And amen. You may be seated. Amen. In the presence of the Lord today, we we'll certainly give honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He's the author. He's the finisher. By faith on today, we can't live, can't breathe. We can't move, can't do anything without him. So excuse me if I get a teary-eyed. Just see where the Lord has brought me from. And we're grateful to be here on today. So let me thank God for the Pazada, the El Joaquin Ortiz. Lead the worship service on today. Thank you for your kind words. Doing the introduction. We honor the Elder Johnny Sawyer. And Minister Jerry Wilson. Minister Delbert Davis. Amen. And all the clergy, all the evangelists, missionaries that are present. Amen. We honor my wife. Amen. Mother Durman. Mother Tally. The Chairman Mitchell. And amen. All the saints that are present here on today. Amen. It's good to be in the good Lord's 
house on today. If you allow me to read a few passages of scripture. Amen. Keep moving the clock closer to me. A little long-winded. Don't want to bore your patience. It's going to catch a few passages of scripture and move forward. I guess we'll throw a comma somewhere in there and said to be continued. God is good. David said, I will lift up my eyes unto the hill. What's coming by help? Mr. Freeman said, Oh, my help. from the Lord. We read in the scripture. Oh my God. Familiar passages of scripture. Oh my God. In the book of 1 Corinthians, 11 chapter, verses 23 to 32. Read a few here, a few there. To be continued. For I received of the Lord that which I delivered unto you. Same night, Lord Jesus, which we were betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do it remembers of me. At the same manner also, he took the cup. He stopped saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you as often as you drink it, it remembers of me. As often as you eat this bread, drink this cup, you shall do Ye shall do, show the Lord's death until he come. Well, so whoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Including in verse 28, but let a man examine himself. So let him eat the bread and drink the cup. For he that eat it, drink it unworthily, eat it and drink it damnation unto himself, not discerning the Lord's body. May God have a blessing, readers, hearers, doers of his word. The book will keep you from sin. Sin will keep you from reading this book. May be seated in the presence of the Lord. Whew. Hallelujah. We honor Chairman Mitchell and these great men of God that are present today. Thank God for seeing Deacon Michael Clark. Amen, a great man of God, and glad to see him. He's here today. You allow me. There's so many things that are, are happening in the world, and, and 
people we communicate with, uh, trouble is in the land. And people are troubled in their mind and trouble in the spirit. Some are oppressed and some are depressed and mental health concerns is a reality. Been fasting, been praying, and and I turn off my television. My wife was telling me about the clip of Naomi Osaki. She had a breakdown when she lost the U.S. opening. But yet she apologized and decided she's going to stay away from tennis for a little while till she get herself together. You used to not talk about that, but it's a reality. Yeah. And people are going through. Stop by here today. No, we usually preach Easter message during Easter. But Jesus said, and it's often we receive the Lord's sacraments. We do it in remembrance. Him until he comes to rapture the church. But on today, it's not Easter. But I want you to remember the sacrifice that Jesus did for us. Remember the promise. Remember Jesus. So that Jesus is the answer to our problems. We must trust and believe in him. That he's the author. He's the finisher of our faith. He knows our thoughts far off. He knows our uprising. He knows our down settings. Jesus is the way. Truth and the light. To remember is to recall the mind by an act, an effort, or memory. It means to think again. It means to retain in memory. It means to keep in mind. It means to Remain aware of. The Lord had told the children of Israel through Moses that to keep on rehearsing it in their minds over and over again, least they forget about God. We are going about in our daily lives and we are not praying as often as we should. We are not fasting as Often we should. We need to do it continuously. Remember that Jesus is the answer to our problems. The Christian church was troubled, was a troubled church. It had many problems. Uh, we said as long as there are people in the church, there will always be problems. But in this particular time, during the Corinthian church, they were the Christians and the believers. They were sinning and they're disobeying God. And during that time of the Lord's Supper, they had no reservations of just treating people better than others. And the rich folks were there during this particular feast, which was called a love feast. And they would bring food and they would eat, celebrate, and make merry. And they were also serve communion, but the rich folks were eating and drinking and they were getting drunk. But Paul would let them know that he was at the wrong setting. Communion is not designed for you to be eating and drinking and neglecting and despising your brother. It's to remember that Jesus died on the cross. For our sins. That love feast was something like potluck dinners, and they were 
serving and eating and having a glorious time. Can you imagine some with the hole in potluck stew from certain members of the congregation? It will be chaos and confusion if Chairman Mitchell will bring in one of his favorite desserts, one of his favorite vegetables, and will not share it with everyone. Can you imagine what chaos and confusion would take place? Paul was strongly opposed to the behavior. In his letter, he warned them that they were not honoring the memory of Jesus Christ who had died on this cross for our sins. In fact, he told them they were sinning at the communion table. He wanted them to stop what they were doing. In the Amplified Bible reads, for I received of the Lord himself that instructed, which I pass on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had Give it thanks, he broke it and said, this represents my body, which is offered as a sacrifice for you. This do in affection, remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup. This cup is the new covenant. It was ratified and establish in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in affection and remembrance yes, of me. Paul received instruction for Christ regarding the Lord's Supper. Paul was an apostle who accepted Christ after his crucifixion. He was one of the ones who persecuted the church. He was saved in a miraculous manner. Paul shared what he learned with authority in the Corinthian church. They were instructed a proper way how to celebrate the Lord's death. The Lord's Supper, the words broken for you, and shared in many points to the fact that Christ's death is a sacrifice for one's benefit. Even in the place of the people, it symbolizes the believer's participation in Christ's crucifixion. In the celebration of the Lord's Supper, the participants were merely looked at but received the elements. It represents the death of Christ as an object of faith, which unites the believers in Christ. But it also affects this act of giving life, strength, Joy to the soul. It's more than a love fest. Finally, this ordinance symbolized the union of the believers with one another. Instead of chaos and confusion and arguments and debates during the communion ceremony, we're here to show the love of Christ. I'm glad to eat bread with my brothers. I'm glad to drink wine with my sisters on today. Do it in remembrance of Jesus. In essence, the Lord's Supper is a faith commitment. And part of those who partake of the ordinances, whenever they eat the bread and drink the wine, they profess their allegiance to him as their king. And they pledge a life of obedience to his divine commandments. So we're not just here eating. We're not just drinking. We're here to confess that I am saved. I have accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And I receive the elements of partaking in the suffering and the dying of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, until he come again. Remember the sacrifice. John penned these words, I am the bread of life. Your fathers eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which 
down from heaven, mm -hmm. that a man may eat thereof and die not. Jesus said, I am the living bread yeah. which came down from heaven. If any man eat this bread, yeah. he shall live yeah. forever. And the bread I will give is my flesh, yeah. which I give for the life of the entire world. Thank you, Jesus. Let us first understand the meaning of the bread. As they were eating, Jesus took the bread, blessed it, broke it, gave it to his disciples, said, take, eat. This is my body. The body of Jesus became an offering for sin. For we have been Sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. And every priest stands, minister daily, offer repeatedly the same sacrifice, which could never take away the sins of man. But this man, somebody said, but this man. But this man offer once sacrifice for sin forever. But one offering. He perfected forever those who are being sanctified. Thank you, Jesus. Our participation in the Passover blood, bread indicates we understand that Jesus Christ put away our sins by the sacrifice of himself, willing to consent to suffer the excruciating pain for us. His blood was swiftly was not swiftly shed. He was tortured many hours before he died. He bore our body physical suffering for the cause of sin. We sing a song every now and again because he lives. I can face tomorrow because he lives. All my fears are gone. Hallelujah. Remember the bread represents the body of Christ that died on the cross. He suffered many abuse. Yeah. On his way to the cross, yeah. they took their hands and beat him. Yeah. They spit upon them. Yeah. They whipped him all night long. Yeah. But because he lives, yeah. I can go forward. Because he lives, yeah. I can go through. Yeah. Because he lives, yeah. I can press forward. In spite of it all, sometimes hurting, sometimes feeling not my best, but because of Jesus, I am that I am. I can make it. You can make it. He can make it. She can make it. Because of Jesus, everything is going to be all right. Gave body for us. Isaiah pick up his pad and the pencil. Jot it down these few words. Surely he bore our griefs, carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded. For all transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. Chastisement of our peace was upon him. And mother cussed to tell your neighbor, and by his stripes, we are healed. Thank you, Jesus. Took it to the cross for your healing. They said they bore 39 plus 1 stripes. And in that stripe somewhere, 
was my healing. In that stripe was my deliverance. In that stripe was my salvation. That's because he lives. I can make it. I can go through. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The cup represents the blood of Christ shed on the cross for our sins. The animal sacrifices of the Old Testament look forward for a time when Christ will shed his blood for the sins of the world. The sacrifice was the final one needed to save the world. His blood, catch it, his blood was enough for all those who accept him as their personal savior. Paul says to celebrate these elements, remind the people of the church of Christ's sacrifice. We often and so easily forget, we often complain about the small sacrifice we make in knowing the incredible sacrifice that Jesus body and blood are made to redeem man back to God. They may have a better relationship with the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Matthews picked up his ink block, papers, and jotted down these few words. In that 11th chapter, verses 28 through 30, come unto me, all ye that are labor and a heavy laden, and I will give you Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I'm meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. A few weeks ago, we were in a revival at the new community, Temple Church of God in Christ, and had a powerful evangelist by the name of Dr. Barbara Jean Olds. And, and sometimes we're burdened, and sometimes we're so troubled, the Lord spoke to her, and she just said, sometimes we just need to let it go. You've been in this race too long. We've been struggling. We've been holding on to it too long. But the Lord spoke to Dr. Oz and said, let it. Let it go. He's the author. He's the finisher of our faith. He knows everything about us, and sometimes we need to just cast all your cares upon him. First Peter 5 and 7 through 10 said, cast all your cares upon him. For he carried for you. Be sober. Be visited because your adversary the devil is as a roaring lion seeking about whom he may defile. Who said fast and faith knowing the same affliction accomplished in you brethren are in the world. But the God of all grace who has called you unto the eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After that, you have. After that, you have suffered a while. Make you perfect. He'll establish you. He'll strengthen you. He'll settle you down. He'll calm your mind down. He'll give you peace in the midst of your storm. Trouble all around you. But the God we serve will give you peace. If you keep your mind stayed on him in our PWW lesson, powerful lesson that we studied, Psalms 91 verses 1 through 2 yeah. and a clue at 16. Hallelujah. He that dwelleth yeah. in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. David said, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. He is my 
my fortress. He is my God. In him will I trust. Surely he should deliver me from the snares and the fall, from the north and the pestilence. He shall cover me under his feathers, under his wings. Will thou trust in him? At verse 16, with long life, with long life, with long life, with long life. Thank you, Jesus. He said, I will satisfy him. I will show him my salvation every now and again. You got to find your secret place. Every now and again. You got to turn off the television set. It's me again, Lord. I need your help. It's me, God. I just looked up my life the other day and God I'm in my secret place just pause to tell you thank you in your secret place blocking out all your surroundings Sometimes you're in your job and you want a quiet time, but circumstances won't allow you to do that. But every now and again, when you get home, turn off the television set. Send the children in their playroom and have a little talk with Jesus. Tell them all about all your trouble. Your faith is crying. Your answer, bye bye. Get a little prayer word to it. Know that the fire is burning. Just a little talk with Jesus. Make everything all right. What a friend we have in Jesus. All of our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege. It is to carry everything to God in prayer. Yes, this. Oh, what peace. We often forfeit. Oh, what needless pains we bear. Oh, because we do not carry everything. Whew. To God in prayer. So sometimes the weights that we're carrying in this hymn is said, needless pains that we bear, meaning that we just need to just give it to God. There you go. Let it go. Give it to God and leave it. They say, Take your burdens to the Lord. And leave them there. And, and sometimes we go to the altar and the evangelists have prayed and prayed and you deliver. But before you get in your automobile, you don't pick it up again, but leave it. Just leave it. There. Remember, sacrifice. Always remember that you're braver than you think. You are stronger than you seem. Loved more than you ever know. So on this Lord's Supper Day, let us 
Just be mindful. It's more than a first Sunday ritual where we serve and receive the sacraments. Jesus died on the cross for our sins. He that knew no sins took upon the sins of the world that we may have a right relationship, a right fellowship with God. So that we can call the Lord anytime. We don't need a lamb anymore. Don't have to sprinkle on the doorpost. They say somebody came and took the place of a lamb. It is Jesus Christ, the righteous one on today. So as we stand all over the temple of today, we give God the praise for all that he's done for us. I know that some of you have been in the church a long time. Some of you have been saved for quite some time. But I remember the things that I used to do, places I used to go. But then came Jesus. <laughs> then they had to do it. But because of his love, because of his grace, because of his mercy, he saved a wretch like me, and I'm so grateful. I am happy down in my soul that Jesus saved me. He cleansed me, washed me, made me whole. Because I had a relationship with him, he told me to ask. And it shall be given. Knock. And the door shall be open. And the problem we're facing on today, all he wants you to do is just ask. Trust, believe, and give him the biggest praise that you can give. I'm so glad the trouble trouble don't last always. And if we could just be honest with ourselves and really let our minds recall some of the things that the Lord had brought us from when we experience or receive some bad news the initial shock seemed like we weren't going to make it but Jesus was there he gave you strength he gave you the desire to press forward. Yes, yes, it yes. was hard. But he brought us through today. So excuse me if I feel a little teary-eyed. Remember, promises of Jesus. There are one here today on the side of my voice who have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today. The doors of the church are open on today. He was wounded for our transgression. 
beat him that day. Beat him all night long. They drill spikes in his. This part of the hand because the stronger to hold him up. Nail him to the cross. Did it for us. Thank you, Jesus. All we had to do is believe in our heart. Confess with our mouth that God has raised Jesus from the dead. And you shall be saved. Just believe and receive it. Salvation is yours on today. There's someone to hear the sound of my voice. We have accepted the Lord as your Savior. Didn't take that time to be in the secret place with the Lord. It's imperative for us as Christians to find that secret place. To commune with God. If we don't take time out to pray daily, if we don't take time out to fellowship with the Lord, we'll go back to the world of sin. The things that you have done in the past, you end up doing again. The doors of the church are open for those. Said Brother Hughes, I just need a little bit more strength. The doors are open to you all today. We're also going to open up the altar pray for the children as they prepare go back to school go to prayer to prayer protection over them that God will cover them with the blood protect them from COVID-19 protect them from the flu and various illnesses that God will protect them from the bullies and they will be obedient and respectful to the teachers and administrators in the schools Amen. There are LORTs, amen. President of the youth department, president of the children's church, amen. They're anointed, consecrated men and women of God, and they love the children. And we just want God's divine protection to overshadow them in the name of Jesus. I feel the presence of the Lord in this temple. Somebody ought to shout glory. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, lay your hands under my hands as a point of contact, God. Look upon these children, oh God, these teenagers, oh God, and they return back to the public schools, God. Lay your hands upon them, oh God, in the name of Jesus, as they travel, oh God, whether they're riding with their parents, riding on the school bus, walking to school, God, whatever method of the transportation they take to get to school. Protect them, oh, shadow them, God. Bind the hands of the enemy, oh, God. Protect them, oh, shadow them, God. Let no harm or hurt or danger come upon them, God. Put a shield around them, God. Put a hand of protection around them, God. Protect them, glory to Allah, glory from COVID-19, God. Protect them, God, from the bullies, oh, God. In the name of Jesus, and cast the devil out of their minds, oh, God. They may be obedient, oh, God, and respectful, oh, God, to the teachers, oh, God. And administrators that we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, oh, oh Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way. Oh, Jesus.
a message do this in remembrance of me do it in remembrance of the great I am remembrance of the son of man remembrance of the son of God I don't know about you but I know it was the blood for me I know it was the blood I'm gonna start singing I know it was the blood I know But we testify. Hey! I know it was the blood.
Hallelujah. We got announcements. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord for he is good. Amen. I stand before you to give you the announcements of St. Stephen's Church of God in Christ. We're located at 189 South Bird Neck Road in the historical community of SeaTag, Virginia Beach, Virginia, where the pastor is none other than Elder Bruce Elliott Hughes Sr., amen. And we thank God for him. We're in the month of September, amen. God is a keeper. And he's continuing to keep us here at St. Stephen's and saints everywhere, amen. We bless the Lord. Today is uh, first Sunday. I just want to remind you that uh, our back to school drive, amen, finale is today, if, if, if you will, amen, and we will be giving out back to school items to the children, and also uh, evangelist uh, Gregory wanted to let me know that she has something special as well for the youth, amen, so it's just not for the babies also, it's for the youth, so please immediately after service, go to the annex, amen, and receive the items that uh, you know, we've collected uh, the Children's Church Youth Department as well as uh, Sister Shanina Olds who assisted in regards to making our sure our children and our youth start back fresh and on a good start. Amen. And amen. And the Youth Department, she wanted me to call his name out, Elder Hoacom Ortiz. Amen. We bless the Lord. Uh, also, too, just want to let you know that September 12th, amen, I'm, at, I'm, I'm on next Sunday, is our homecoming, amen. Uh, 
Hallelujah. And we will have a service. Sunday school will begin at 1030. Want to make sure you know that's modified. And as our superintendent said earlier, that doesn't mean you skip Sunday school. Come on out ah, at 1030. Amen. And then service will begin at noon. And we will have Pastor Lavelle Ford uh, along with Upper Room Church on the Rock Church of God in Christ. Who will uh, be our speaker for that Sunday? And then that week, amen, we will be in our fall revival. It begins on the 15th, amen, 15th through the 17th. And our pastor put out direction uh, this week that he would like for us to consecrate. I don't know what that big word means, fast, amen, fast and pray, amen. On those days, if at all possible, six to noon, if you're going to go six to three, you know, but fast, do what you can, amen, in honor to the Lord so that he will meet us here each night, amen. And our revival, again, will be the 16th through the 17th. We have great speakers, as you see on the flyer that will be present but we're looking for the Lord to meet us here amen and we know that he will and September 19th I want to make sure that you are tracking this as well guidance was put out by our pastor that's the third Sunday amen and the church of God in Christ at large is in the campaign of I love my church amen and we're going to do our part as well. He is requesting that all who can to give, give via Giblify, or you can see uh, the finance office with your $25, amen, in support of that. However, the climax will be on the, on the 19th, amen, when he's requesting all to make sure that they have their monies in. Again, that is on the 19th, and it's for the campaign Church of God in Christ at large. I love my church. Amen. And he's requesting a $25, uh, amen, contribution from each member. Amen. I wanted to back up because the president of the of YPWW, Sister Shanina Owls, wanted to let me know and all those know that she still has books available. Amen. She has uh, regular size books, which are $3. I believe she has two, and then two of the large, which is $5. Please see her, amen. YPWW goes on every Thursday uh, via Zoom at 7 p.m. I sent the email out with those dates for the month, amen. Um, and the speaker, though, for this coming Thursday will be none other than Elder Joaquin Ortiz, the guest teacher, if you will, amen. Again, September is just a celebration month, amen. I'm talking about none other than September 25th, amen. Ah, somebody said if you don't get excited for your own pastor, something wrong with you, amen. Ah, we've been announcing this for a while, but we are in the month of celebration. Ah, and I'm excited about it. Can't you tell? Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God for our pastor, none other than Bruce Elliott Hughes Sr. Ah, amen. God has done a great thing for him. Amen. Even before ah, we saw it come to fruition, God was doing it. Amen. All right. So we thank God. September 25th, that is a Saturday. Amen. Uh, 10 o'clock at New Community Temple Church of God in Christ. He will be installed. That's his installation service. Amen. All are welcome to attend that. Amen. Amen. And then at 5 p.m. on the same day. Amen. We'll have the pastoral installation banquet. Ah. Amen. And so it is a celebration all week long. Amen. Amen. Uh, for the, <laughs> y'all know I do crazy looks. Please forgive me. Amen. So the pastoral installation banquet, amen, will be at 5 p.m. on the 25th. Amen. It is a ticket required to attend. Amen. We still have some tickets available. Tickets are $100. Please see the tallest man in the house, Deacon Chairman Mitchell, if you would like to get your ticket. And the banquet will be held at Norfolk Waterside Marriott. Amen. It's going to be a grand event. Amen. You know how we like to dress. We're going to come dressed. Hallelujah. In celebration. Amen. Of the one and only Bruce Elliott Hughes Sr. Amen. And I just also want to make sure um, on the 11th, that's this Saturday. Amen. Um, the Faith and Family Legacy of Worship. Amen. Concert will be held here at St. Stephen's, amen. 
and that will be at 5 p.m. And we thank God for none other than our music uh, department president, Evangelist Beverly Cornick. Amen. And that is her family. We call her Cornick, but she'll say, amen. That's her family. And for those who are able to support, please come out and support her. Also, um, from the tallest man in the house, amen, our deacon chairman, he is requesting that immediately after service, quick meeting for all men, amen, to meet him. He has some information that he needs to put out for you in regards to homecoming, amen. I bless the Lord for what he has done uh, here at St. Stephen's, amen. It should be easy for us to say we love our church, amen, because God is doing great things here at St. Stephen's. I don't have any further announcements, amen, but please govern yourselves accordingly. Know that I love you with the love of Jesus Christ, and now please prepare your hearts and your minds for communion. Amen. There's a fountain filled with blood. Supper in the Amplified Version, 1 Corinthians 11, starting at verse 23. For I received from the Lord himself that instruction which I passed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is, represents my body, which is offered as a sacrifice for you. Do this in affectionate remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant, ratified and established in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in affectionate remembrance of me. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are symbolically proclaiming the fact of the Lord's death until he comes again. So then, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in a way that is unworthy of him will be guilty of profaning and sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. But a person must prayerfully examine himself and his relationship to Christ. And only when he has done so should he eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without solemn reverence and heartfelt gratitude for the sacrifice of Christ, Christ eats and drinks a judgment on himself if he does not recognize the body of Christ. Last verse, verse 30, that careless and unworthy participation is the reason why many among you are weak and sick and a number sleep in death. Amen. We thank God for reading God's word. Amen. Let us examine ourselves before we receive the sacraments of the Lord. Amen. That's part two of the message I gave you good side. Amen. Part two is coming. Amen. Minister Deborah Davis will pray God's blessing over the sacraments. Gracious Father. Right now, as we 
your teeth. My body was broken for you. Shall we? Walk from the shedding of blood, there's a remission of sin. We are to walk in the light as he's in the light. We have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ shall make us whole. Shall we drink?
Everyone standing. Father God, in the name of Jesus, as we leave this place but not from your presence, we ask that you dispatch angels around our cars and protect us on our way home. We ask that you protect our homes and don't let anybody break in and do us any harm. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us hence now and forevermore. And all of God's people said, Amen.